All right then, so it's time to square up the corners on the doors where I routed them. And um, I'm hoping I can do this here on my little table uh, with my Christmas tree and my lamp still here because uh, it brings me uh, good light. Anyway, let's 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 see how this works. I'm not going to be able to hit too hard on this um, on this table, but uh, we'll get a few uh, a few strikes in here. Okay, let's try that. See if I can hit a little harder. Ah, oh, that's better. As long as I'm directly over the post below, I can do this. Somehow I think this is more of a wine project. There we go. Cheers. All right then. Beauty. Beauty, 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 beauty. Okay, so now to gain for the hinges. These are lovely, lovely uh, extruded brass hinges from Lee Valley here in Canada. Unfortunately, um, they ran out of stock, so I was actually only able to get one set uh, this week. So um, I'll put them on uh, this big main door and I can at least get my glassware put away. Anyway, so um, cutting or installing or what I call gaining hinges uh, simply means cutting the um, mortise relief in the side of the door and also in the frame. Now because these are deep extruded hinges, uh, that's quite a deep uh, mortise. So anyway, let me let me show you my technique for it. Many of you will have already seen this. Okay, so I've got the cabinet down and the door is going to sit in here like this. Now in this case, uh, the companionway is on that side, so I'm going to open um, this cabinet this way uh, so that there's no risk of it ever uh, opening in front of uh, someone coming in on up the companionway. So the hinges are going to go on this side. So what I do is I take these and I clamp them and I have a couple of handy dandy clamps for that. And I'll just get started with the clamping process and then fine tune it as I move along. What I'm going to do at this point is actually just swing the whole apparatus off the edge of the table here so I can work on it like this. So with the two surfaces flush, I also have to make sure it's aligned vertically or in this case horizontally. And if I can slide an awful blade down so that it's inside the opening but outside the door on both sides, well then I know I'm in just the sweet spot. So my technique to lining up um, to gain out for the hinge is just to place the hinge in the correct location and in this case the top edge is lined up with the bottom of the rail here and then spread across exactly across the two members and then I will install it in this location and to do that I'm going to use my handy dandy self-centering drill bit. Uh, anyone who's been watching the show for more than a little while has seen me use this before. So it just takes a tiny little dot and I'll run a single tiny little number four screw in here. These are actually cheap mild steel screws. I'm using these now because it just helps with the assembly because they're so much stronger than brass screws, but these will be replaced with brass screws in time. Okay, so now it's about um, scoring around the edges of where the hinges are so that I can get a good clean chisel edge when I start chiseling these out. And that's simple, it's just knife work. So now I'll just take the hinges back off. Okay, chisel work. Yeah. As pleasant as this is, I think it's going to have to wait till tomorrow. Well, good morning. I think I've determined that the traditional 
knife and chisel technique uh, to gain these hinges is not going to work, especially under the conditions of what I have here in terms of a workbench. I'm going to try something that I've been meaning to try for quite a while, but it does involve a road trip. And so again, very grateful to be able to borrow Lady Zephyrus's car, back up to Genoa, get some stuff to make this go a little bit better. All right then, so back in the shed in Genoa Bay, and what I'm gonna try and do is use my Dremel um, with the little handy dandy semi-router base attachment thing to try and route out um, for those hinges and see if that makes any sense. It's something I've thought about for a long time actually and never even tried, uh, so let's give that a go. Okay, so I've just gone out and bought two little router um, straight cutting bits for the Dremel. One is teeny tiny and one is significantly bigger. You can see they actually have uh, cutters on the end so they can do a bit of plunge cutting. Now, obviously the larger one is going to make this a lot easier. It'll make cleaner cuts and uh, be a lot easier to control. However, the smaller one has the advantage that the radiuses where it can't cut in the corners are gonna be much, much smaller and there'll be much less for me to chisel out. Not that this is going to leave a massive amount. Anyway, first thing I wanna do before I try to make any sort of jig is actually to chuck them up in this uh, little Dremel of mine and see if I can do a reasonably clean little cutout in this piece of sapili. Okay, let's go. Well, at first I would say it's a bit fuzzy, but what if I hit it with a little bit of sandpaper? Blow it out. That's not actually a very bad little cutout. That might work just fine. And that's with the small bit. Hmm. Okay, on the success of that cut, I'm going to go with the small bit. So, to set up a jig, I need something that the outside of this little router base can sit on. So the first thing I need to know is the distance between the outside edge of the bit and the outside edge of the router base, and it's about an inch and an eighth. Now, if I was to imagine that I'm going to make a little box and uh, that the router bit can ride in, it would be and what I'm trying to do is cut out obviously this small area for the actual hinge. So the hinge is an inch and an eighth by two inches. So if the router bit is going to sit in there, it has to be able to ride on an outer box, some sort of fence on the outside that is an inch and an eighth larger in every direction. So it'll bounce around inside the box and then I can just clean up everything that's left. Well, that's great. So now I just need to make a little um, plate like this that I can cut this hole out of and put little fences on the outside of it and um, by adding the width of the hinge and two times one and an eighth gives me three and three eighths and the width is two plus twice one and three eighths giving me four and a quarter. Should be easy. So here's my basic block that I will eventually put the fences on. First thing I want to do is take out a bit of a dado out of the bottom so it can sit over the two edges of the um, door and frame. If, I, if you imagine them being drawn here underneath the jig, this is the door and this is the frame, and that way I'm routing out both at the same time. You, you'll see as we move along. So here's the door and here's the frame and imagine them having a hinge. We just open the hinge and the hinge is going to sit right there. Now I can take my jig and just slide it over the door and the frame and I can start to make the cutout that the rudder will bounce around on. Hope this works. Okay, so I've made myself four little fences here and basically they will just sit on uh, like this. One, two, three, four. And they will provide a little uh, enclosure for the router base to sit in. All right then, well that worked out pretty well, but you may be able to see a flaw in my plan. Yeah, <laughs> my little uh, channel to slide over uh, and no, yeah. Okay, there we go. Nice, 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 nice. Now, there's an added really neat feature of the particular dimensions that this all worked out and a quarter of an inch um, fence piece. And that's when I slide that right against the end, 
um, or wherever the frame will be, it actually perfectly positions it uh, for where I want the hinge in terms of the offset from the bottom of the rail or style. Very, very pleased with that. Okay, so time to actually cut out the actual um, aperture in here that the remaining routing will have to cut through and that's simply just routing it. Okay, so this will start with a little bit of a plunge route and then turn it into the box. Wait a second, I'm having too much fun, but there's no reason for me to route the whole thing out. I just need to cut it out. Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on, Peter. Well, that is the hardest cut this little rig jig is ever going to have to make. So far, I'm loving this. Loving it. Okay, so it's time to try it. Here's our frame and door. I'm going to clamp them together and install it. <laughs> install the jig. Let's just get that and I'm going to slide it up against the clamp. And here we go. Okay, all I really want to do is cut the outside so I can measure it. Whoa, very, very close. That'll do, perfect. Oh my gosh, excellent, okay. So I think it's time to take this thing back to the city and see if I can't do some excellent hinge mortising. Okay, so let's see if we can transfer this little technology with the jig and the router to the actual cabinet. So here I have where we got started and I'll just clamp this together somewhere around there and somewhere around here. And again confirm that I'm correct left to right. Perfect, 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 perfect. Okay then well at least one small complication. Um, the test wood that I used up in Genoa Bay was slightly thicker even though it still was dressed to three quarter so I actually now have to uh, put tiny spacers in to make sure that the jig centers properly on these which is fine there's no harm having a tiny space here the little more of the barrel of the hinge will stick outside that is just fine. Um, the other thing I have to do is make sure I absolutely nail where these hinges go where I'd already cut out with the knife so that I don't have a little mark around it. So I think I'm in pretty good shape and uh, time will tell. All right then, let's have a look. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Thrilled. Okay. Yes, 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 yes. Love it. And there we go. Very, very, very pleased with that. Now, not everything here is perfect. 